Um, so I am Antoni, my name is Antonio Pugliafito from University of Messina and uh, is uh, my colleague Giovanni Merlino. We belong to the University of Messina, but also in this uh, CNI, I will explain what it is, and the company Marte Miaio. So the University of Messina is a university located in Italy, in the southern part of Italy, in, uh, in Sicily where we teach computer engineering, specifically is the mobile and distributed system lab where we work and operate. Uh, CINI is an uh, uh, Italian university consortium of almost all the Italian universities that are focused on uh, computer engineering and informatics. It is uh, organized in several labs. One of these is the Smart City and uh, Smart Community Lab that I'm leading at the moment. And uh, it involves uh, several hundreds of researchers distributed all over, all over Italy. Finally, SmartMe is a company that was uh, originally created as a, a spin-off company of the University of Messina. Now it's a company on the market. We collaborate uh, with this company and uh, it uh, supports us in a series of development related to hardware and software and specific application onto, onto the market. This is the location of the company, the new building where uh, uh, the people transfer about uh, six months ago. Okay, so the outline of this presentation is the following. We will discuss about uh, edge computing, uh, specifically some hardware named Arancino, and I will try to give you indication about uh, this uh, hardware. Then uh, we will go on details uh, related with the software part, uh, that is uh, the Stack for Things framework, uh, that is strictly related with OpenStack. Uh, and uh, we will also give you some uh, uh, example of application that we are doing uh, at the moment, uh, or some uh, smart cities and uh, industries. So, the hardware. Um, the problem that we try to solve is uh, how to deal with a huge amount of sensors, uh, actuators uh, distributed around, uh, and also mobile phone uh, devices uh, that uh, they have some uh, computing capability and storage capability, and uh, we want to uh, consider them part of the infrastructure. We are firmly convinced that uh, boards, uh, camera, sensors, actuators uh, should be considered since the very beginning as part of the infrastructure that you have to create. So the infrastructure will involve uh, uh, computing resources, uh, will involve storage devices, uh, networking issues, uh, but also IoT. Because nowadays, uh, sensors and actuators are part of the system that we have to set up, uh, and then we will uh, develop uh, services on top of it. So the problem is uh, how to deal with these devices. Cooperating with this company, the family of Arancino boards has been developed. The one that you see there, but there are uh, several uh, uh, versioning, uh, and we will show you the real objects we are uh, with us. And uh, the idea that is behind these boards uh, is uh, to try to emulate the way in which uh, our brain works. So on the same board uh, you have uh, two hemispheres, two parts. One is based on a microcontroller that is uh, able to interact in real time with the external world, uh, that means the sensors and the actuators. The other side instead is uh, based on microprocessor, like in this case is a Raspberry Pi that you see here, but there are also other possibilities there, more powerful, that is able to um, work with this data, to store this data to keep memory of the past. And according to the past, also try to predict what is going to happen in the future. So this is the two hemispheres that are represented in this way on this, uh, on this kind of board. That has also some other interesting capabilities, like these uh, expansion slots uh, that are conform to the uh, to the um, uh, standard, uh, um, there are hundreds of possible expansion available on the market, uh, these click standards, uh, others can be created. So this is the basic board, and then you can specialize in and adding some dedicated hardware. So this board is used in some products like uh, environmental monitoring station, uh, getaway LoRa, smart camera, uh, noise detector, 
more and more that are products based on these components. At the same time, you can have a different communication channel here, like uh, UMTS, LoRa, uh, Sigfox, uh, LTE, uh, and more. So at the same time, enabled to interact with the board itself. So in some sense, they try to replicate the way in which uh, the human brain is, uh, is structured. Uh, on the other side, we have to control these boards. So the problem is uh, how to have uh, thousands of these devices distributed around, uh, how to interact with them. They create uh, a sort of a fleet of devices, and you want to talk with them, to specialize, to inject code, to receive the data, to group according to the specific problem that you have to, to solve. And typically, the approach that is available in, is the following. You have the device, the device generates data, this data are stored in the cloud, and then I go and look at this data. This creates a serious problem with regard to uh, the latency, for example. So in several applications, it is not uh, convenient and possible to use this approach. In some cases, uh, we have some API available that can be used to interact with the device, but it depends on the producer, on the developer, or the board, if it makes them available. Uh, so in some limited cases, this is possible. As I said at the beginning, what we want to do is to bring the edge devices inside the cloud and consider the same level of computing, storage, and networking resources to build the infrastructure we are interested in. Uh, so what we want to do and what we are able to do is to have uh, edge devices physically connected to uh, different uh, uh, local area networks uh, that interact with the cloud and uh, I can mix devices from one network with devices with another one, with virtual machine, with storage uh, resource somewhere. I create my, uh, my infrastructure and then I deploy the services on top of it. So this is what uh, we are trying and we are able to, to do. Uh, we will explain how it works. So this is our stack, our uh, uh, reference architecture that somehow is similar to the Loki architecture we were discussing yesterday. So we go from the uh, lower level where you have the devices, then there is the operating system on top of it, some uh, components that are part of the evolution of OpenStack uh, that are the stack uh, uh, for things lighting road component that runs uh, on the devices, on the board, and uh, iotronic services that instead is running uh, into the cloud. And then uh, you have the different driver that allow you to interact with the, with the physical uh, uh, environment. So this is, uh, the, uh, very quickly, the architecture. And uh, what we try to do is to arrive to this uh, sort of vision that we define a software-defined city, software-defined uh, uh, industry. That means uh, a full abstraction that goes from the physical layer, where you have the sensor, the actuator, the detect data from the city or from the industry where you're working, and uh, they generate data that are managed according to board like this one. They have a counterpart, a virtualized representation inside the cloud where they mix with the other resources of computing and storage and provide the services and application to the final, to the final user. For doing this, OpenStack has been extended with a fourth pillar that we name Stack for Things. This is where you can find it, where it is available that adds the capability to interact with the edge devices, okay? And uh, what we will try to do now is to give you more details uh, related with the uh, way in which uh, we implement this uh, interaction with, uh, with OpenStack. And I will leave the stage uh, to Giovanni. Thanks, Antonio. Uh, so, um, first of all, a comment about the previous slide. Uh, it's important to say, uh, settle on the uh, uh, naming because we have both these iotronic namesake and stack for things the reason for that is that uh, uh, as you can imagine especially uh, in uh, in the in the, in the industry in, the, in our company um, in our spin-off company we have uh, a, a bigger deeper stack which includes lots of application level logic so stack for things is a kind of a namesake uh, because we 
we try to, to keep it, uh, say, cool, also because it's still always open source software, but it's uh, somehow a larger umbrella project. Iotronic is uh, what we are focusing here right now uh, on because it's uh, really the uh, um, subsystem for IoT as written there. So it, it is meant to think about IoT devices as, again, OpenStack compliant resources uh, to manage. So, okay, this is a very high level overview of the architecture just to, to know uh, which is uh, what. Uh, we have uh, the, the IOTRONIC, uh, say, uh, uh, main uh, components, which stay in the cloud, in the data center, let's say. Uh, then we have uh, uh, a number, of course, of uh, interfaces, CLI, of course, the, the uh, a custom panel for Horizon, uh, all the, the things that we know are, are, are needed, of course, in, uh, in the uh, case of OpenStack subsystems, but there's something special, which is in particular so-called lighting rod. It's the name we have given to the device side, the board uh, hosted agent. And uh, the, you see a number of uh, arrows depicting the fact that we have uh, a number of uh, uh, elements at play, as we'll see in a moment, uh, for the communication between the cloud and the uh, far edge constrained node. So uh, mm, this is uh, a depiction of the uh, uh, IOTRONIC architecture on the cloud side. Um, uh, uh, as we said, it's a very uh, uh, OpenStack uh, compliant uh, subsystem. Actually, to be honest, even the namesake uh, somehow can bring you some memories. Uh, it started uh, all as a kind of a fork, an official, uh, say, uh, atom fork of ironic. Why? Because the idea was to really take all uh, the uh, boards as bare metal first, and uh, then uh, enabling all other kinds, as we'll see in a moment, of uh, workloads, for instance, containers, later. So uh, uh, on the device side, there is Lightning Rod, and uh, uh, um, Lightning Rod interacts uh, with the cloud uh, uh, mostly, foremost, with, uh, through uh, uh, the WAMP protocol. Uh, WAMP is uh, not the Windows, etc. Uh, kind of acronym. It's uh, actually Web Application Messaging Protocol. It's uh, a sub-protocol of web sockets. It's uh, somehow standardized in the sense that there's a draft uh, RFC. Uh, and uh, uh, it's um, interesting for a number of reasons. There's no time here to, to discuss about that, but uh, it's, it can be thought as a, a protocol akin to MQTT, which uh, most of you know is quite popular in the IoT space, but it's uh, a kind of more advanced, more featureful uh, protocol, and uh, bonus point is based on uh, Web sockets. That's very important because uh, uh, I guess we'll see later. Uh, but uh, you can possibly guess we based this kind of, of communication on web sockets because the idea is that uh, the, the board should be able to call on, so to call really the IOTRONIC uh, cloud anytime, anywhere, behind any kind of constrained, very uh, corporate like kind of uh, uh, network. So uh, to be clear, as you'll see later, Antonio will uh, show you some uh, uh, use cases. Uh, we talk about uh, situations where uh, really uh, uh, most other systems uh, that try to control and to interact with uh, boards are uh, break, are not able to, to really do what they need to do. Uh, so it's kind of battle tested. And uh, okay, there are a number of uh, functionalities, but we'll uh, uh, get to that uh, later. So for instance, okay, yeah, plugins. Uh, why plugin injection is, uh, first of all, what is a plugin? Is it just a namesake for uh, uh, um, uh, an amount, of course, of uh, code that we can inject at runtime on the board. Why it's important? Because this notion of plugin, plugin injection has been the first uh, uh, 
way for the method for us to uh, be able to customize uh, the, the, uh, the business logic, let's say, the inner workings, but even, say, lower level software running on the boards uh, where, when deployed in the field. Again, in the field means maybe in the middle of the sea. So that's, uh, that's the point. Uh, there are two kinds of uh, plugins. Uh, synchronous and asynchronous, as you can expect, the idea is that you can either, of course, uh, make a kind of uh, RPC style uh, call, or you can instead just uh, uh, poll and check uh, uh, what is the status of uh, the, the run. Uh, and by the way, this kind of uh, duality, synchronous asynchronous, is really enabled by the WAMP protocol. Uh, the WAMP protocol has so-called rooted RPCs and the rooted PubSub. That's why I said it's a kind of a superset of MQTT. Uh, okay, about tunneling and the forwarding, uh, which is, again, not the only, but one of the foremost features about Iotronic. Uh, it starts by questioning what we want to do with the boards. We, we, uh, uh, in uh, the most general way, we expect to be able to create virtual networks spanning, of course, uh, uh, domains, spanning, of course, geographic distances, and uh, connecting IoT devices. And again, when we say IoT devices, uh, it, just like what we showed, we uh, are thinking about uh, stuff uh, um, that we can exemplify like uh, single board computers, but not only those. We have done uh, some work also with uh, mobiles, for instance, Android mobiles, and so on. So the idea is that uh, we can, uh, of course, enable a number of uh, applications. Just uh, um, an example is being able to support some, let's say, not really legacy protocols, because that's not the right name, but protocols which have, have some limitations. For instance, uh, some time ago, we made uh, a, an application based on all join work because all join okay, is a kind of uh, bus like the bus, but uh, the service discovery uh, worked only across uh, uh, really a layer two uh, a network. So the, the only way to make it work was to uh, uh, deploy our solution. Um, okay, this is a very quick overview of how uh, uh, you can break down uh, the networking part. Again, we didn't want, uh, that's our approach in general, we didn't want to uh, uh, put uh, the so-called kitchen sink into Iotronic. We uh, thought that everything should stay where it belongs. So of course, this means involving Neutron because Neutron, of course, has lots of uh, functionalities in this sense. Uh, we also uh, have been uh, uh, careful not to uh, overload devices. So, uh, for instance, uh, the, the, the footprint of our solution based on Iotronic plus I uh, Neutron is um, very lightweight, because what happens is that uh, uh, the, the um, device doesn't know anything about the, 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 the existence of Neutron. Neutron does everything on the cloud and we just get the wire, really, the tunnel back to the uh, cloud to instantiate interfaces and then assign IPs and so on. Uh, okay, the kind of uh, uh, use cases, of course, uh, are, are uh, many. Segregating, of course, the devices on the same physical LAN or some, uh, uh, say, kind of uh, uh, local network, uh, or grouping dispersed uh, devices uh, in the same overlay, uh, creating networks uh, that uh, combine devices on one end and virtual machines or bare metal, whatever, on the data center and uh, even putting up together very, very heterogeneous devices. Board on one side and, let's say, mobile on the other. Uh, so the forwarding of services was another key point. So being able not only to always uh, 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 be able to reach the device, to send commands, as we said, we can send RPCs. So let's say not just sensors, but actuators are totally part of the picture, as Antonio told you before. So the, the concept of uh, uh, um, cyber physical system uh, uh, in full. 
and uh, um, um, also exposing services through service forwarding that works by a complex system that involves, uh, it is complex on one end, but it's simple on the other, where simple matters. On a constrained device, simple matters in terms of having composable, very unique style kind of tools. This stuff is based on a tool we have uh, just forked and modified for our own uh, uh, um, uh, usage, uh, which is called WSTAN, so tunneling system based on web sockets. Our innovation has been creating a, a reverse tunneling mode. So the idea is that the device calls home and then is able to uh, get a number of uh, tunnels instantiated back Again, whichever the situation, firewalls, nuts, and so on, middle box of every kind. But also, it works by piping TCP or UDP connections. So what happens is that, uh, uh, and also using uh, uh, other uh, small uh, Unix style tools. For instance, we have used here also Socket, that maybe you know, as a tool to instantiate virtual interfaces. Um, then, uh, uh, discussing about forwarding is just a kind of uh, uh, appetizer for uh, a kind of a huge use case, which is uh, the, the web of things. Some people call it web things. Uh, uh, you may know already that uh, Mozilla was behind this, um, say, initiative some time ago. Uh, at a certain point, it transitioned to a third party but it still is an open source and open community uh, framework. Uh, the idea, of course, is putting together things that talk very different protocols, and we'll get back to that, uh, to that uh, in a moment, but uh, also being able, again, to reach things and exposing uh, uh, resources the way the Mozilla guys, of course, uh, prefer as pure, say, web-based kind, of web kind of interactions. Uh, and of course, we like it too. In fact, we have enabled that uh, over uh, these other uh, implementations, so adding some other elements. In particular, we have used the NGINX, uh, that maybe you know, as a reverse proxy on both sides of the connection, so on the cloud side and on the board. Uh, and uh, we have also used uh, for SSL encrypted communication CertBot that I guess, again, it's a very nice open source tool and uh, lots of people are, say, investing in this kind of uh, technology. In our case, it means having, uh, say, can, kind of pay PKI for free. And uh, um, uh, the uh, use case can be exemplified very quickly like this. I can have a service name like WOT, Web of Things, let's say. We can have a generic uh, uh, domain, example.com, say. A subdomain, which is board A. Why? Because the subdomain here will be really the name of the board or whatever name I want to give to the board and a certain port that I need to reach inside. Uh, then this is the full URL. And uh, this is uh, what happens very quickly. I, I get really those parameters. I get Iotronic to interact, check, and eventually ask, uh, designate another subsystem uh, in the uh, uh, open infra open stack community. Uh, and then, of course, uh, it means that uh, we get uh, uh, to the, uh, our real endpoint, which means, uh, it, it means, it, of course, it's meant to be the reverse proxy, NGINX. And so this is uh, where, say, there you see the uh, green arrow, which is the WebSocket-based web tunnel. And uh, in the end, uh, this is the whole picture. Uh, this is uh, uh, an example of usage by a client. So of course, DNS resolution, step-wise, of course. And then we get the forwarding, and uh, uh, I'll show you with a very, very quick demo uh, uh, what it looks like, very, very high uh, here. This is a, a web page. Uh, I don't, I, you are not seeing that. Uh, how can I show you? Maybe stopping here. Now you see it, okay. 
Uh, this is the, uh, just a simple web page. But what's interesting is uh, it's uh, compliant with this vision because we have, you see, okay, uh, uh, some graphics for what? Temperature, humidity, uh, red LED, the green LED, sensing so and actuation. You see, the, maybe a guess you see the temperature, humidity, real time. Okay, just a moment, I'll uh, refresh the page. You should see here, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, in Italy, it's uh, nine hours <laughs> of uh, 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 time zone uh, difference, but you can see that I'm uh, uh, turning on the LEDs, okay? Now, of course, this is a very simple example, but what we want to show is that this works by really engaging the endpoints which are just URLs of uh, sensors and actuators, okay? So slash green LED, slash red LED, okay? Uh, and we want you to play with it as, as well. If you want, you can just check it yourself. Um, you can also check some other information about Iotronic because there's lots to unwrap. But we presented that both at the Open Infra Days in Italy in 2019 and another time as well, and also in Vancouver five years ago, uh, uh, right here. So if you want to know some more information about virtual networks and plugins, you can check that one in Vancouver, and the one in Italy for containers and function as a service, which is, of course, I guess, very interesting for all of us, but there's no time and space to talk about that today. Uh, just wanted also to show you these are all so subsystems, components, hardware that is uh, uh, in usage here. And there's something which is on our radar, of course. We didn't work yet uh, uh, on top of Kubernetes, Kata containers, and Starling X, and we are very, very interested, interested in collaborating. And uh, about collaborations, by the way, I'll uh, 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 get back to Antonio. Okay, we just selected uh, some uh, real use case applications of this technology, but we can uh, do present even more. This is a um, company that produces this big truck that go around Europe, and uh, all these trucks are equipped with uh, uh, extension of these boards. There are three of these boards on each of these track, lots of sensors. We collect in real time about 60 different parameters uh, that are used to monitor the device itself and to make also some preventive maintenance. So they recall the track back if they realize that there is something strange. Uh, and these are some of the things that you can do, apart of actuating all the different uh, opening, close, uh, of this big truck. It's amazing because with a cellular, you just move this truck and uh, you do lots of things. And uh, on the other side, you have the telemetry related with the different parameters and, of course, location, position, acceleration, if you brake, how you use the truck itself. At the moment, we are controlling roughly 300 of these devices going around uh, uh, Europe. Uh, this is uh, instead uh, a different application because that one was related with, uh, with the industry, but we have uh, some uh, use case with uh, uh, Stellantis, with uh, Ferraris, uh, where we use uh, this technology to monitor some production chain. This is an example instead of a smart city where uh, this is an area of uh, Milan that is named the Laurenteggio, and we are, being, we are using, it's already sold, running uh, this technology to integrate uh, 13 different uh, subset of uh, uh, sensing device produced by different producers. So there are uh, noise detector, uh, smart parking, uh, um, flow, uh, vehicle flow detection, uh, um, uh, environmental monitoring station and many other services all integrated with one single dashboard where the uh, employee in the municipality can take under control a big area of Milan. Uh, just to conclude, collaboration, uh, we are uh, cooperating a lot with the INRIA in Paris, where there are some researchers working on this technology. And 
together we have this uh, the XMS project that is a sort of integration of different kind of communication protocol under the same umbrella. So it's an extension of what we are explaining here. And uh, these are two projects uh, uh, recently approved. One is an European project named Slice PP that involves uh, almost all the European countries. And the idea is to create uh, a federation of uh, research infrastructure that uh, will be used by researcher on one side and industrial industry on the other. Um, on the other one, the So Big Data project instead is an Italian project that is related with SLICE. So So Big Data brings the money to create the infrastructure in Italy. And uh, so this is why they are related. And inside So Big Data, we are developing this uh, virtual lab on pervasive intelligence in cyber physical system for future society that will be the uh, infrastructure in Italy that will be federated with the other one in the other countries. So these are uh, long time projects. Slice uh, will be over in 2040. So it's a, a long vision project. And so big data study is a four year project. So under Slice, there are several kind of specific projects that will be activated year by year to create the big picture of Slice. Okay, future work, we have been approved this uh, book, so we are writing uh, this uh, book uh, and uh, very, we hope to complete by next year, 2024. And the title will be Assembling Smart Cyber Physical Systems, Heterogeneous Diffuse Green Technological Infrastructure for Seat and Industries, where we will try to put together in a comprehensive way all the different technology that uh, we try to introduce to today in a more <laughs> extended way. Uh, so this is something that we are, that we are working on. So thank you very much. And, uh, if there are questions, of course, we will try, we will try to answer. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so thank you again. Thank you.